What's the deal with the platform? Clearly it looks and sounds like a dystopian thriller, but what kind of dystopia is this? Are we talking Squid Games or Hunger Games? Let's find out. The script was worked on for four years, and there's a lot in there. Greed, punishment, human condition, and the nature of social hierarchies. All of it, however, is still organised within a three-act structure. The dialogue is also rather blunt with exposition, so there shouldn't be too much confusion in what the characters are talking about. That said, there's lots of complexity brewing under the surface. The film's entire setting is a vertical building with a moving platform in the centre. It's a prison of sorts called The Hole. Existing on each floor of the facility are two people. In the centre of the room, the moving platform descends with food. The food, however, is only what was left over from the floor above. The higher the floor, the more likely you are to eat. Whoever is lower gets less food. How low does the hole go? Nobody knows for sure. Some viewers might think they have a strategy for this situation. Why not just save the food on the platform for later? Nope, that's against the rules. The punishment is a change in the temperature of the room. You might freeze or burn. You also won't be staying on that floor for long. Every month, the occupants are randomly assigned to new floors. The scariest part, the occupants have no idea how low they could go. They could end up in the deepest depths where nobody is fed. Who is behind all of this? An institution referred to only as the administration. They've essentially created an experiment in human nature. What happens when there's no food for those at the bottom? Well, cannibalism is becoming an option. The possibility of working together against the administration becomes unlikely. It's hard to band together when you're trying to eat and not get murdered. The hole isn't just technically a prison. This is made clear through the protagonist, Goring. He willingly enters the facility to get a chance to win a diploma. All he has to do is survive six months in the hole. How bad could the outside world be? We don't know for sure. The most we see outside of the hole is the kitchen. The food sent on the platform is prepared by chefs. The banquet is supervised by an old man in a suit. The decadent nature of the meal and kitchen conjures some questions. How aware is the administration about the inhumanity of the hole? Do the chefs accept it or are they not informed of what the facility really does? There is so much to consider. There's no time for Goring to contemplate all of that. As the film begins, he is drugged and plopped onto the 48th floor. Trimagasi, his cellmate, has been in the facility for a few months. With such an experienced companion, he might seem like an ally. He seems like one considering how he knows the mechanics of the hole. Unfortunately, Trimagasi is serving time here for killing a man. Who knows, he might kill again. He was previously on floor 132. Who knows how gruesome things got down there. In addition to food, altruism is in short supply as the platform lowers. Still, Goring makes an attempt. He does a good deed for Miharu on another level. He gets to know her better as a former actress. Maybe he can form an alliance. Maybe things will work out for him. Well, things got worse. When Goring gets to a lower floor, he's on the menu. Trimagasi starts preparing a rationed menu of Goring. Before he becomes food, Goring is saved by Miharu. But with little food, Goring has no choice. All that's on the menu is raw Trimagasi. Cannibalism became the new method of survival. It doesn't go well. Goring finds himself overwhelmed with guilt for what he must do. Another man must die so that he can live. Is all this worth a diploma? With Trimagasi transitioning from man to meal, Goreng will get a new roommate. His next level is 33, and his new pal is the cancer-afflicted Imagiri. Well, she's not that new. She was the woman who interviewed Goreng. Like Goreng, she volunteered to be here. Also with her, she's brought a dog. Worth noting is the dog's name. Ramses II might sound like an odd dog name, but it relates to a crucial part of history. This is the name of an Egyptian pharaoh. He's most notable for favouring peace with treaties. In fact, he drafted one of the earliest treaties to avert war. This signals that Imagiri favours idealism. As an idealist, she believes the whole doesn't have to be so greedy. The many levels can band together and ration food. Nobody will have to starve or resort to cannibalism. The others won't have to experience what Goring did. Her plan goes into motion. When the platform of food arrives, she sets aside a rationed portion for the floor below. She then tells the lower floor to do the same. Since she states there are 200 levels, this seems doable. Well, it would be. The other levels don't work together. They fear the plan won't work. Nobody will work together. This is a harsh lesson Goring soon understands. If every floor eats, drastic action needs to be taken. He needs the other floors to comply. He does this by threatening the floor below him. If they don't ration, he'll defecate on the food. The threat is passed down onto the other levels. While this motive doesn't work for the floor above, it can work on the floors below. But wait, it gets worse. First, Ramses II is killed by Maharu for food, then Goreng and Imagiri descend to level 202, 
But weren't there only 200 levels? That's what Imagiri had naively believed. With her hopes shattered, she takes her own life, leaving Goreng to resort once again to cannibalism. A new plan forms with Goreng's new cellmate. After being transferred to floor 6, he shares the level with Baharat. Armed with a rope, Baharat has a plan to escape. He plans to climb up the floors and reach the top. Of course, that all depends if the floor above will help him out. They do not. Thus, a new plan is required. With few options left, Goreng decides there's only one way to go. Rather than travel up, they'll proceed down. His plan is to ride the platform to each floor. That way, he can force each floor to ration the food. Baharat joins him, figuring out who has eaten most, they reserve handing out food past level 50. This won't be an easy rule to enforce. Violence follows. On their trip down, they encounter a wise man who gives them some advice. If they want to send a message to the administration, there's one food they should save. The Italian custard, panna cotta, should be sent back untouched. If this food is sent back, the administration will feel the sting of lost power. The plan seems to go along decently, starting at level 51. Goring figures there's probably 250 levels. He's wrong. The platform descends further and further, each level becoming more gruesome with despair. The struggles become more hopeless. Finally, Goring and Baharat reach level 333. It is here that Goring finds a lonely child. Goring recalls that Maharu had a daughter. Could this be her? It's hard to say. But Goring does know what to tell the administration. He gives the panna cotta to the girl and places her on the platform. She will be the message. She will carry on as Goring dies. Okay, there's a theme going on in the platform. The opening lines encapsulate the allegorical staging. I tres clases de personas. Los de arriba. This line sets the stage for the film's allegory on class and societal structure. It highlights how the wealthy maintain a system that ensures their success. Those at the bottom represent everyone else struggling to survive. The ones who fall are those like Goreng and Bahara, who dare to challenge the system and risk everything to uplift those on society's lower rungs. The verticality of the whole is also worth considering. It's a sharp contrast from Snowpiercer, a film with similar thematic elements. But while Snowpiercer's train was horizontal, the platform's hole was vertical. What the two films share is food. Both films are about inequalities of basic need. When the world decays, Case, there are fewer resources. Those who control food basically control humanity's survival. Capitalism also becomes a prime target in the film. Everybody in the hole thinks they've figured it out. They come in with a plan and believe it'll work. But much like somebody saving for a home, there are unexpected problems. The rules keep changing and plans fall apart. To live in a capitalist society, you need money. What you need to do to get that money ultimately doesn't matter. In the whole, it doesn't matter what or who you eat. All you need to do is survive. Equally distributing food requires an ideology in the film. There has to be an idea that nobody at the bottom should go hungry. While these goals are noble, they tend to fail. This is due in part to equality being squashed under capitalism. It's hard to restructure a world when most people can barely survive in it. Similarly, it's hard to convince people to consider something different than capitalism. Most people working too many jobs are too tired to form an alternative society. The platform doesn't have a firm ending. There are many questions left to ponder. Was the kid really Maharu's? Did the administration lie about nobody in the hole being under 16? Why did the administration lie about the many levels? There's a theory that the kid is a hallucination. This theory doesn't hold much water though, as both men can see her. The girl represents a hope for rebellion. The whole can't be dismantled with a single act, but there still needs to be an action, even if it's an untouched custard. The film was released right when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. It was perfectly timed. Framing class warfare within a structure of solidarity echoes the stay-at-home orders. Times got tough and people became worse. The film is depressingly real in this regard. In another light, however, it inspires. What carries the film is its favouring of empathy and solidarity. Will that be enough to save society? It's hard to say. But there are values a strong world should be based on. What are your thoughts on the platform? Check out our detailed explanation of the film and its themes on our website and be sure to like and subscribe to Flickside 